Right, so you all know what a family tree is, yeah? Well, this is the family of Total Annihilation. Chris Taylor, the king himself, is the patriarch, father of Total Annihilation. Then you've got TA's younger, hip sibling in Supreme Commander. A few years went on, and now both children have raised large families. Estranged son, Supreme Commander 2. Cool young cousin with potential, Sanctuary. Bizarre uncle, Total Annihilation Kingdoms. Cool nephew, Balanced Annihilation. And their two kids, who get along, but do their own thing. Oh, and I guess Planetary Annihilation has to exist somewhere in there too. Anyway, The First Child, Zero K, is a game that I've covered briefly on this channel before, and it's existed since 2007. The second game, the one we're talking about today, Bar, is much more recent, only existing since early 2019. The short version of this story is that Balanced Annihilation, a recreation of Total Annihilation with its history rooted in mods, was forked multiple times by different people. One time it was forked for Zero K in 2007, which is still being supported, and another time it was forked for Bar in 2019 which currently is in an alpha state, though it is very playable despite that tag and the connotations that go along with it. I'm planning to go a lot more in depth on the honestly very interesting history of Total Annihilation and all the games that followed it in another uh, very much longer video, so let me know if that's something you'd be interested in. But all you need to know right now is that while Bar and Zero K do share a history, and they do have their similarities, they are very much their own unique games, especially today. Bar has the benefit of being new, and there are a lot of people excited about it. Zero K has fallen off over the years, though it still has a consistent user base on Steam, which includes a few of the people in my Discord, if you want to join and talk shop with them. You can do so by joining Patreon or YouTube memberships for as little as a dollar a month, links in the description. But if you're not familiar with Bar, Total Annihilation, Sopcom, or any of these kinds of games, well, you can go watch any of these videos, or just listen closely for the next 30 seconds. While all of these titles have similarities and differences, they're recognisable in a few key ways. They're all fairly large-scale, action RTS games with deep tech trees, vast unit pools, a two-resource streaming-based economy, and lots and lots of robots. There are of course finer details too, but frankly I don't have the experience across all of these games to compare the most minute details. Most of my comparisons will be with Supreme Commander, the game that I have the most experience in. But don't worry, there will be an exhaustive comparison coming in a potential but probable Total Annihilation retrospective video I'm planning for next year. So then, bah, beyond all reason. Overall, it's smaller in scale than Supreme Commander, but it's no less in depth. In fact, you could argue that it's just as dense as Supreme Commander, and in some ways even more so. There are two factions in Beyond All Reason, Cortex and Armada. This immediately addresses a problem that I have with other Total Annihilation successes, like Zero K and Planetary Annihilation, in that there's only one faction. I always loved the different groups in Subcom, and while they're not as varied or as plentiful here in Bar, Having the two is very welcome. Resources are streamed, meaning they're constantly flowing in at a rate determined by your production. Your storage is limited and it can be expanded to allow you to hold more metal and energy at any one time. So you're both trying to increase the rate of flow and the amount you can store. But you can stall out your economy by committing to too many things at once and trying to draw more resources than you have coming in, leading to comically long ETAs. It's a balancing act, and it's a pretty tough thing for new players to get their heads around. And like in similar games, managing and effectively utilising a good streaming economy in Bar is something that I find very satisfying, and it's quite the challenge. Bar introduces a couple of nice quality of life features here too. You can send overflowing resources to your team using these handy sliders, and choose the rate at which you convert your energy to metal with your dedicated converters. Both are really nice features that I'll sorely miss next time I play Supreme Commander. The unit and building pools in Bar are vast, with nearly 200 unique entities for each faction. They're all split into three tiers, 
the first being cheap and basic, the second being more advanced and expensive, and the third being hyper expensive experimentals. We're talking orders of magnitude more costly. Each faction follows similar categories but has differences in their individual units and specialties. For example, both have access to the same classes of units, so ground vehicles, bots, hovercraft, planes, boats, etc. But only Cortex can build these armed metal extractors, and only Armada can build a tier 1 flying gunship. But both have light, medium and heavy tanks, albeit with different stats, you get the idea. Most units do have an analogous version in the other faction, and they will find differences in their stats and the like. But all the experimentals are wholly unique, and there are a few other unique ones peppered through the building and unit trees. The point is that it's varied, and both factions feel like they have a reason to exist, but it's not quite at Supreme Commander levels of diversity. It's above others like Zero K and Planetary Annihilation though, because of those single factions and still overall smaller unit pools. While it is as or more dense than Subcom, the scale can't really compare. Maps are smaller, and things like the big experimental units and nuclear warheads flying through the sky just happen quicker. You're definitely in the thick of it in less time in a bar. And that's not a good or bad thing, it's just different. Honestly, I like the differences, and it's a refreshing take on the formula for someone like me who has really only played Supreme Commander for a significant amount of time. These kinds of games aren't the easiest to get into, they never have been. Compared to the relative simplicity of something like an Age of Empires or Command and Conquer, the streaming economy, huge scale, complex interactions and mechanics, and vast unit pools can understandably be daunting for a casual player. Being someone who plays a lot of kinds of RTS, I'm very aware of learning curves and trying to gauge how difficult a particular game will be for someone inexperienced to get into it. So I decided to rope in my mate who has basically never played a Supreme Commander or Total Annihilation-like game before, and get him into playing Bar, and ask him a few questions about how he found the new player experience, and to see what it was like for him to learn all of these new mechanics and systems that, for me, I feel could be a bit overwhelming if I was completely new to it. And this is what he said. At first, the user interface looked a little bit overwhelming, but once I got the hang of where things were and what things I needed to monitor throughout the round, I felt like I was already quite comfortable. I was a bit apprehensive at first to jump in and start playing without any knowledge about what the game was actually about, but once I got going, I felt a lot more enthusiastic and motivated about what things I could actually try for the next round. The first ever round I played was simply just a case of me getting used to the user interface and how the resource system worked. I've never played a game quite like this one before, so it was a little bit of a challenge trying to play with a new mindset. I feel like achieving success in this game involves a lot of trial and error, and if you have a great team at your side, you can definitely experiment with group compositions and specific map strategies without fear of failing too hard. I think that there's a lot to learn in terms of how to use different types of units in different situations in order to boost my team's position, or simply to negate a particular strategy that the other side might be using. I don't think success can really be found in sticking to just one unit type for all situations. There's so many units in this game between the two sides and I feel like I've only just scratched the surface of how to use different groups of units to get some points on the board for my team. I've definitely struggled a lot with learning how to set my start of game economy up so that I can actually get resources in to build more things. Um, I think if I build things out of sequence early on and I don't quite get that order right, I can definitely end up crippled and I'm relying on teammates to supply me with resources or I'm having to go out into the map um, a little bit further than I normally would start of game to get those resources. Compared to Supreme Commander, Bar is a little harder to get into. Not because the gameplay is comparatively complicated, but because of the usability. Let me tell you, playing Bar and definitely Zero K for a few hours will really make you respect the amount of effort that a full release, professionally developed and produced game goes to make it easy to understand and use. They just put usability way in front of mind, more than these kinds of games which may have smaller teams and possibly have teams with less experience. I don't want to talk bad against the developers, these guys are doing an awesome job. But you know, I don't know how many people worked on Spring Commander, but I know the dev team for Bar is like in the dozens, maybe two dozen at most, so you know, it's something to think about. Bar definitely has a lot of room to improve in this aspect, 
The UI is feature laden, but it's quite intimidating, and the new player experience is lacking. But I know the devs are looking to work on both of these things in the future, and yes, it's still an alpha build, so I'm not going to dock points for this. There's a lot of time to improve here. Graphically though, Bar is in a great spot. This thing looks fantastic. The special effects are... Honestly, they're just draw dropping in some cases. Like, look at this laser fire, man. God, this looks sick. This is what I live for. This and spotlights. You know, like the ones in Pacific Rim on the Jaegers. So the fact that the rotating turrets have big ass spotters on them makes them very happy. Artillery also has a great thwomp to it and it's really satisfying to use. And I mean, look, you could even alter their trajectory to arc instead of direct fire. That's so cool, man. They just, they thought of everything. They really did. Stability wise, despite being an alpha, bar has run really great for me. Performance is solid and I've had no crashes, nor have I had any significant technical challenges. The only one worth mentioning was a time where I had no game audio, but that was fixed with a restart and it hasn't happened again. There has been a time here and there with people needing to rejoin lobbies for a multiplayer game and stuff like that, but that can happen with any game, so it's no big deal. I think bar really shines as a co-op experience. Yes, I am speaking from a position of bias as someone who doesn't like RTS PvP, and I do hold the same opinion for Supreme Commander. But seriously, these games are awesome in co-op, man. Making huge defensive lines with massive laser guns and artillery emplacements, and quick reaction forces with the boys, man, how could you not love it? The devs clearly think it's a good way to play too, because the game includes two wave defense style horde modes that are really hard, but they are very, very fun. Scavenger Defense is exceptionally good, and I've been having a ton of fun with my mates recently with this one. Like I said, it's really hard, no doubt about it, it is tough. We haven't been able to beat it even once yet, even with a 50% resource bonus. But we're close, and we'll get there soon. Having these massive kill boxes and huge defensive lines is just so cool, and it really is some of the most fun I've had with an RTS this year. Beyond All Reason is really impressive, despite it being an alpha, with development still to go. I'm very excited to see it progress and release on Steam eventually, and you should absolutely give it a go if you're interested in these kinds of games. It's free, it's technically sound, there's content to play, and it is awesome with friends. The team has also built a really fantastic website for the game, complete with in-depth unit codexes and a development roadmap for the future. There's also a ton of useful guides and tutorials to up your game or get you to a level where you're comfortable. So go give Bar a shot. I guarantee that you won't be disappointed. Thanks very much for watching and thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon and of course here on YouTube memberships as well. You can join for as little as a dollar a month and you'll get access to the Discord where we play RTS games like Bar. You probably saw some of the footage from our games uh, in this video. And there are also other benefits depending on the tier. So if you'd like to support me, that's the best way to do it. Of course, you'll join legends like Aero, Jack, Nutty Jawa, Overlord Jeebus, T Edis, Crispy Robo Chicken, XV204, Benjamin, David, Cynical Cheddar, Sebastian, Luke, Dakayo, Nintendo, Bad Ghosts, Sean, Grey Spirit 4, Peter, Tim, George, Nedders, John Kaiser, Juan, King Thickems, and Pavel. And of course, at my Paladin tier, we've got Johnny, Marika, Eric, Age of Cause, Joe, and Tank. Thanks very much, everyone. You know I appreciate it. And thank you all very much for watching. Drink responsibly. Uh, LTTstore.com. <laughs>